Uh, <laughs> All right, you ready? Do, 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 do. Yep. I wonder why, you, for some reason, you drop out of sync every once in a while when I'm editing these things. I don't understand why. I don't know if it's maybe your connection, your internet connection is just breaks up a little bit every once in a while. Hmm. It's frustrating. Okay, it's frustrating. Okay, so I am ready. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay. <clears throat> What am I? I've totally forgotten the. Uh, oh, Jack. Um. Sorry, I was just closing up my thing. Yes, <clears throat> go ahead. All right, Jack. Yes, Brian. There's money to be made in audiobooks. Well, well, well oh, in in audiobooks. Yes, audiobooks, Jack. Uh, audiobook. All these books come out. They need people to read the books. They need okay. people so that people can be driving and listening to a book instead of reading a book. A lot of people don't want to read. They don't know how to read. They don't like to read. They would much rather jog and hear a book and maybe retain 10 to 20% of the information from that book. So there is a chance for you to make some money reading books. Great. Yes. yes. And so I can make us money, make the show money. We can upgrade everything around us. Yes. You can make the show some money. Uh, so they, the publishers have sent me some, uh, some, uh, books or uh, excerpts that they'd like you to read to kind of test to see if you'd be the right person to read the book. Oh, they just man. want a professional read. They want a, just a normal sounding person reading the book. And so I just sent you one, um, give it a shot. Just please stay professional. You know, I sometimes, um, you know, you're being judged, basically. It's it's okay. like an audition. Okay. Um, I feel like you were you sort of started to say something about me and my past performance, and then you edited yourself. I might have. I might have. Uh, okay. So this chapter is it's uh, from a book called "The Road to Tobruk," and apparently it's a memoir uh, about a, a a German officer in World War II. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> pardon me. And uh, the road to Tobruk is it's a memoir. They're looking for someone to to read the book, mm -hmm. and that could be you. Oof. Did you get the sample chapter? I, I just open it and let me just read it ahead of time. I so I sort of know no, what the. Just, let's just do it now. I just want to be done with it. Well, we, you know, it's not like you have any place to be. I mean, all you do yep. is, is yep. salad work and nope. like what? You need, to, you need to read it. Fine. Okay, I'm going to read it, having never read it. That's fine. And I'm going to get us the money once I do this. Yeah. Okay. All right. Tell me when you're ready. I'm ready for you to read uh, this excerpt from The Road to Tobruk. Okay. The Road to Tobruk, Chapter 7. Tank Commander Gerhardt knew well that there was no way that they could afford to pull over. Time was of the essence, and they needed to be within 50 kilometers of Tobruk within the hour. There were five crew members in his panzer, and they'd never make it if they were pulling over every time one of them had to answer the call of nature. Unfortunately, the water in North Africa did not agree with them, and the entire crew suffered from dysentery as they baked in their tank under the Libyan sun. His radio operator, Hauser, looked at him with desperate eyes. Gerhardt frowned and shook his head in the negative. I'm sorry, Gunther, he said, but we can't stop. Orders are orders, and we cannot make exceptions. You must poo-poo in the panzer. Hauser seemed despondent. He was a young man who'd volunteered for the Panzer Corps out of a sense of pride and patriotism, and now he was being asked to poo-poo in the Panzer. <laughs> he didn't want to poo-poo in the Panzer. He knew it was going to be wretched. Gruber, the gunner, sensed what was coming and stuffed cotton balls into his nostrils in anticipation. <laughs> Hauser nodded to Gerhardt. Before Gerhardt could open the hatch to let in fresh air, Hauser did... <laughs> Before Gerhard could open the hatch to let in fresh air, Hauser defecated violently, shouting, For Germany and the Fuhrer, I poo-poo in the Panzer! The stench was immediate and shocking, violently assaulting the olfactory senses of everyone but Gruber. First, Gerhard retched and threw up, then Van Zelt, the driver, then Newman, the loader. Grumman uh, <clears throat> spared the odor but not the sight of Hauser's Panzer pro poops, as well as the resulting Panzer poop puke, finally succumbed and regurgitated his breakfast into his lap. Of course, they blamed the Jews. <laughs> okay, well. Sort of ties into the rest of our show. Um, damn. Yeah, it's a I, shame. But you know what? It's not a big deal because th that was your very first audiobook audition. Uh, there are other audiobooks in the sea, as we say, in the it, audio it, business. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's a thing. But um, 
yeah, it's it's you know maybe I don't know the genre, but that doesn't feel like a very um uh uh. uh good military book that seems like it's focusing on all the wrong things am i crazy i you know it's kind of interesting to me i i'm a rommel uh, fanatic so I'd, I'd probably read that but we'll okay. see all right but that's okay i just sent you another uh audiobook audition and okay. this one is called uh up late and it's a history of the late show with stephen colbert oh my gosh that's exciting yeah and I have uh, friends on that show. This is a book coming out. Uh, well, let's see if you still will. Uh, I, they have a book coming out and they would, um, you know, they need an audiobook reader and you are just the person. Awesome. Uh, that's very exciting. So I've just gotten it and uh, I read guess away. I can't. Okay. I won't read it. I'm just going to read it. Into, yeah. We're pressed for time. Okay, okay. Here we go. Up late, a history of the late show with Stephen Colbert. Stephen watched in horror that night as the election pivoted from the expected Hillary win to the unthinkable. He clutched his rosary beads so intensely that three of them broke. When the election was called for Donald Trump, he lost control of three bodily functions, sobbing being one. This was not supposed to happen, he told himself. The following day, he entered the staff writers meeting, noticeably exhausted. His eyes were red and puffy. I'm sorry, he told the staff. I was crying all night. He took a sip of water to replenish his tears and pointed to his head writer. Tim, buddy, what do you have for us? Tim pitched a sketch for a hilarious spoof of a pharmaceutical ad. Stephen was having none of it. Shaking his head, he stopped Tim cold. Maybe you haven't heard, he scowled, but Donald Trump was elected president. He paused for a moment because even saying those words make him, made him dizzy. From now on, everything we do will be about how terrible Trump is and how very, very sad we are that Trump won. Every single thing. We are not here to entertain. We are here to help our viewers mourn. Stephen stood up and walked over to the bulletin board, onto which had been pinned numerous index cards with jokes on them. He yanked one off and looked at it. This is not about Trump, he frowned. He dropped the card on the floor. One by one, he went through the cards, doing the same thing, until there were no more funny jokes on the bulletin board. Now, he told his writers, give me some jokes. Rebecca stood up. She'd been disappointing ever since she was hired to tick a box. But now she sensed it was her moment to shine. What if he, we said he was a big, dumb idiot and orange and stupid, she pitched. Stephen lit up. He knew he was set for the next four years. Pretty good. So close. That's pretty, pretty close. But you did break up at the end. I mean, just the one line that she was tired to a tick a hired to tick a box. I'll run it by Harper Collins and see what they say. Okay. All right. Well, I'm hopeful, I guess. Be hopeful. Yeah, it's not gonna happen anyway. Okay. All right. Well, um is there any other audiobooks for me to read? Yes. <laughs> Just sent it to you. Okay. Now this one is called Full Moon. And it's oh. a novel and it's about a werewolf. It's a horror, okay. horror book. Is it a young adult or is it um a full um adult fiction? It's a young adult book. Young adult. Okay, perfect. Um, I've just gotten it. I've uh, opened it. Okay, then take her away, sir. Okay. Full moon. Chapter three. A disturbing pattern. Jake knew the full moon was coming, and after three months of this, he knew what that meant. Slowly, he would transform into a werewolf. Hair would cover his body. His jaw would extend, and his powerful fangs would come forth. His eyes would adapt to the night, and he would move rapidly on all fours. He didn't wish to kill, but it was out of his hands. Once the transformation was complete, once he had assumed wolf form, his will was not his own. He would track, hunt down, and devour Asian priests. <laughs> this tore at Jake when he was in human form. Why did he just target Asians? He would ask himself. Why was his impulse never to snack on a Latino or a white or black victim? Are werewolves simply racist, or are they programmed by nature to target people who outperform everyone in standardized testing? So strange. He could deal with the monthly transformation and the hair and the fangs, and even seeing his circumcised penis turn into an uncircumcised wolf poker. <laughs> but it was eating him alive to think that he might be a racist werewolf. In human form, he certainly wasn't. He loved sushi and harbored fantasies about being trapped in a gondola with King, Jum, King Jong-un's naked sister. <laughs> 
And then the other big question. Why did he only crave baristas? He vividly recalled the previous month running right past a terrified Naomi Osaka. <laughs> she played tennis until she was spared. But moments later, he leapt right through a Starbucks drive through window and tore the throat out of Kenny, whose parents were first-generation Korean. It didn't make any sense to him, because during the day, he absolutely loved to drink coffee. He'd spend hours nursing a cappuccino and dreaming about being trapped in an elevator with Connie Chung. He wanted answers, and he knew where to get them. Bing. <laughs> <laughs> uh jake is a jake's a weird man there's a lot of conflict there jake's torn can't, can't be easy being a werewolf no no i would i would say not Boy, well that's an interesting okay that's too bad full moon right. full moon full uh you know but I, I guess pre-ordered on amazon yeah young adults who's a book whatever the section <sighs> Well, uh, you know, I'll check with Harper Collins. You know, yeah, let, let me know. Uh, maybe you can do the Colbert book, but we're out of luck with the other ones, I'm afraid. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, again, if you know, maybe if we just started recording the podcast five minutes earlier, and I could read these ahead of time, it would. I mean, I'm telling you, it would help me out a lot. You know what? Uh, in the in the audio book business, it, it's much better when you you read something cold because it, it's your it's your true voice. And that's what people really want in books. They don't want to hear some kind of very scripted board. Then, then he went down to the, it's gotta be, it's gotta be natural. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, sorry. Uh, you know, sorry, I blew it. Sorry to, you know, um, you know, embarrass myself once again. It's okay. Sorry to my wife. I'm sorry to your wife too. To be married to, to this. 